Okay, so the manipulative skill themes that I'm going to be teaching my class or for this video is are catching and volleying. Um, I would make sure to have them already know throwing. I would have th taught that in a previous unit so that they're going to be able to use those skills that they learn in that unit, including including bowling and tossing as well as throwing, um, so that they'll be able to better perfect the skills of catching and volleying. So the first thing that I would teach them is catching, which is the seizure or capture of a flying object in the air while it is still in the air. Um, for this activity, I will demonstrate by catching a ball that a volunteer throws me and making kids kind of try to see what to look for. I'll say, you know, for them to look at my eyes and my hands and my body and how it's oriented to try to identify what to do when you're catching a ball, which is just cupping your hands like this and having it come to you instead of that corralling of it, which is what the first um, pre-control thing is going to be for them. Um, then we're going to practice throwing with a partner so that I can see how they're performing as a sort of like pre-assessment um, to the unit so that we'll get into the activities. Um, but I'll introduce the patterns, orientate, hand orientations, maybe by Simon, playing Simon Says. Um, I'll have the students all be, I'm Simon, and I'll say, you know, Simon Says, put your hands out flat like this. And then I'll have them freeze, and then I'll throw a ball, and they'll see that you can't have your hands, like, flat and extended like this because you can't catch a ball like that. Um, same with corralling and, and more um, common misconceptions that kids think when it comes to catching balls. And finally, we're going to come to the position where the hands are cupped like this, and we're going to be catching balls, um, and I'll throw soft dodgeballs at them individually, and then they'll try to practice. Um, finally, we're going to reach a place where they understand, and so then I'll pair them in up, and they can start to practice. Um, if I see any m huge um, um, concerns, then I'm I will be able to go over that. Um, but currently, it would be really cool to use the egg game. You, know, you usually play with eggs, have two partners throwing a ball back and forth. Um, and if the ball falls, then they have to restart and come to the middle. And that's how it could be kind of a competition. Um, and then the farther apart they get, of course, the harder it is. Um, we could even do that with different sized balls as that kind of promotes differentiation and challenges kids, but also um, keeps everybody doing the same thing. Um, and then we're going to get into the first kind of game being throwers and catchers versus the flash where there's a group of students lined up across the gym and they're going to throw and catch the ball to each other and there's going to be a runner who will be trying to beat them throwing and catching the ball and you can't drop it. Um, I think that would be a really cool game because it also includes that locomotive, mo mo or locomotive movement skill theme as well and they can practice that which is really cool as well as the fact that throwing and catching are kind of together. Another could be tic-tac-toe. There are two groups, or um, there's two groups, like four students, two in each group. You could do this with three as well. Um, one student stands in, there's nine hula hoops on the floor, and then the thrower throws it and the catcher catches it. And if they catch it, they can put a bean bag down and they just play tic-tac-toe that way. Um, and that's why there's two teams. That could be a really interesting game as well. And then another game is similar to Ships Across the Ocean. It could be called Cops and Roberts or Bandits and Thieves, something like that. There's a group of students who have the balls and they're going to be throwing them at kids who are trying to cross the gym. And in this, it would be important because catching is going to make sure that the kid in the middle will go to jail. Um, and then if you get you know, hit, then you go to jail as well. So this could be a game. You could kind of play with it, figure out which ways and rules are going to work best for your class. Um, but I think that could be a really good game as kids are really interested in catching as it um, will get the other team in trouble, you know, so. And then eventually we're going to get to dodgeball and that's just an emphasis on the catching aspect being that if you catch a ball, then you free someone from your team. And those kind of get involved in the even non-manipulative skill movements as well as the locomotive ones. So it's really an intermixing of all of them while still focusing on that one skill of catching. Um, the next manipulative skill theme that I would teach is volleying, um, which is the continuous striking of an object in order to keep it with your hands or an implement airborne or in um, the game field of play. So I would tell them to think as we practice about this skill um, in terms of what this could be used for. So not only volleying, but also four square, keep it up with balloons or bouncing a um, ball on a tennis racket. Um, I'll make sure to tell the kids um, to watch as I demonstrate this volleying skill. Um, somebody will throw me a ball and I'll 
you know, bounce it off my wrist or bump it like a volleyball or with my palm right here. I'll have students kind of notice some things and then we'll kind of discuss as a class what was noticed and what was the mo what were the most important things that I did. And that could be with my hands, my eyes, my body, my actions. Um, but yeah, I would make sure that they kind of thought about it on their own first and then I would clarify probably some already gone over points that volleying includes the fact that there needs to be control, stability, you need to follow with your eyes and a gentleness in your hands or your palms so that you don't just whack the ball all the way out and, or hit it into the ceiling or something like that. Um, so then I would demonstrate again and have them focus on the things that we talked about. Um, then they would get in pairs and volley balloons to each other back and forth. And I'd, make, I'd walk around and make sure that they're understanding the skill. And if not, then we could regroup and I could re-go over um, what I've noticed and kind of guide them on the right path. And then the games would come in. So the first one I would play would, would be with balloons as these kids are just learning about it. Um, and I would have them volley it to themselves. And we could practice this for a while, just up and down, practicing volleying this balloon. Um, and we would practice that for a while and through kind of formative assessment of obser observation, I would see when they were kind of ready. And then we could play a game where they are balling to themselves and then it's kind of an elimination game. It's called Balloon Burglars, and they would kind of try to knock other balloons out of people's hands so that <laughs> they could keep theirs up, and then that balloon would fall on the ground and that person would be out. Um, to make this more challenging and maybe more fun, we could add more balloons if they're ready for that. Um, could have two, we could get up to four, we could even do a class competition, and if they wanted to try even more, then they could. But we would definitely just start with one as these are kind of new learners. Um, another game could be red light, green light, where I would have them bounce the balloon and I would say, you know, red, we'd play red light, green light, green light being that they're bouncing the balloon walking towards me and then red light stopping and hugging the balloon to themselves. Um, so this could also be kind of a competition. We could have them, whoever gets to the other side of the gym the fastest, maybe even back, whoever gets to the other side of the gym and back the fastest with their balloons without dropping it wins, um, but in red light, green light, green light format. Um, this could be just a really good game to have them really learn that control of the balloons as well as to be able to listen to instructions. Um, next level of games could be a big inflated ball, which is still pretty light to bounce around and it's not super um, light like a balloon, but it's big enough that it's kind of sl slower motion um, and it's a good transition into what we're trying to get to volleyballs and kickballs. Um, we could do the same kind of concept, but in a group, we could pass the ball in a circle of the group, we could make this a game in so many different ways. Um, but then we would work into games with this ball that are um, such as four square or nine square. Um, those are really good ideas as people are, the kids are going to learn to use their palms, use their wrists, um, and learn that control of for volleying. Um, nine square would be a little bit, maybe something to work for. I really like that idea, but when there's that big frame involved, it gets a little bit more difficult for the students. So what's super important to know about these games um, and teaching these manipulative skill themes is that all students are at different places and are going to be able to catch different things and be able to volley different things and practice, but it's going to take different amounts of time for them to get it. So I think what's a really interesting thing and important would be to get differentiation involved, and that could be by changing the sizes of the balls. Um, so that the more experienced and advanced students will use, be able to use smaller balls and then children who need extra help and support will have bigger options like the balloons or the big balls. Um, this is just one simple way to differentiate the gym classroom and make sure that all students are challenged um, as well as, you know, but it's comfortably challenged and they're able to learn the skill without getting down on themselves. Um, another way to differentiate is the distance from certain lines, like for the tic-tac-toe, or yeah, tic-tac-toe game, you could throw it from closer or farther away so you'd have to catch. Um, and this is just an indicator of the level students are at in their skill set as we further away, um, as the further away, the more difficult it will be to perform.